With a berth in the NBA playoffs on the line last night, a 10-point lead about halfway through the fourth quarter, the Los Angeles Clippers embraced their inner San Diego Clippers and drowned in front of all of us. It was ugly, it was horrifying, but on the plus side, we're going to talk about the LA Kings and why I believe they will make the playoffs. Hi, I'm James. LA is a hockey town. Go figure. I am your, giving you your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. It is April 13th, 2022. It is a glorious day. I uh, want to start off by thanking the new subscriber that joined the channel yesterday. By all means, if you like the content we've been putting out, clickety-clack the like button. Clickety-clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that. We try to put out a new video between, say, 9 and 10 a.m. every day. It'll remind you we're there. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. I'm not God. I don't know everything. Before we get to the main topic, Kings Hockey, we're going to go through the scoreboard, the news and notes. Last night, not pleasant. Minnesota, they do qualify for the NBA playoffs. They defeat the Clippers 109-104. What does this mean for the Clips? Well, <clears throat> They have one more shot to make the playoffs. They will play the winner of New Orleans and San Antonio on Friday at Crypto.com Arena. How bad was it for the Clippers? Well, they had a double digit lead with less than nine minutes to go in the fourth. And then, oh, by the way, a couple minutes later, all everything center for Minnesota, Carl Anthony Towns fouls out of the game. Didn't matter, they choked. And by the way, it's very strange. They did a uh, survey. The richest owner in all of sports, all of sports, is Clippers owner Stephen Ballmer. <clears throat> and he can't afford to give the guys a Heimlich class. I mean, come on, guys. I understand choking jokes are hack as hell when it comes to sports. But please, your biggest game of the year, qualify for the... <sighs> Clippers. LA has 17 NBA titles and more than, a, and, and I think a dozen uh, NCAA titles and all of a sudden it's like nobody in that town remembers how to put a ball through a basket. I'll, I don't get it. I don't. I don't. What I can tell you is that we haven't forgotten how to hit a baseball in LA. The Dodgers defeated Minnesota 7-2 yesterday. Meanwhile, this morning, the Dodgers will bring out Clayton Kershaw for his season debut. They will play Minnesota at 10 a.m. The LA Kings last night defeated the Chicago Blackhawks 5-2 tonight. They will play Colorado at 6.30. Now, for a couple of quick notes. Speaking of basketball, UCLA basketball's Peyton Watson. He has decided to leave and enter the NBA draft after one year. And I'm sitting here asking myself, who the hell is Peyton Watson? Look, no disrespect, kid. I understand after doing some study that you were McDonald's All-American and whatnot. I also understand you're a grown man and you're entitled to make your own decisions. But what the hell? You averaged 3.3 points a game last year. You're less than three rebounds a game. I get it. You might be saying to yourself, if I'm riding the bench in, the, in college, what's the difference between that and getting paid to ride on the bench in the pros? I understand your concerns. I, it's not the decision I would have made. Not that I know how to play basketball well, of course. The other thing I would say, the Rams have contacted free agent cornerback Stephon Gilmore, according to The Athletic. Gilmore is a five-time All-Pro. He played only eight games last year, and he still made it to the Pro Bowl, <clears throat> which is amazing. I'll tell you something that's just as amazing. How the hell are they going to fit him under the salary cap? Can somebody explain that to me? I am no economist. How the hell do the Rams fit? All, they, the, the Rams, I used to say, F them picks. Now it's F that salary cap. How are they fitting all these players? At, their, at, some, point, at some point, the commissioner's got to say, hey, you can't just give contracts to everybody. Don't get me wrong. I want the Rams to repeat. I just don't know how the hell this magic trick is being pulled off. Let's talk LA Kings hockey. 
ESPN.com gives a, an update of everybody's chances of reaching the NHL playoffs every single day. And five, that's through 538, it's a stat crunching website. And they determined that the Kings have a 67% chance of making the playoffs. Okay, uh, so it's been dropping. It was pushing 90% for about the last week and a half. Uh, but same for a lot of other teams, including the team immediately chasing them. The Vegas Golden Knights have dropped all the way down to 44%. Now, even worse for the Kings, is that they're all everything surefire Hall of Famer defenseman Drew Doughty. He broke his wrist. He had surgery on it. He's done. He's not coming back until next year. And he was fifth in of all NHL players in terms of game time. He played all, over 25 minutes per game. That's almost half the game. He was that important to the Kings. So we are going to talk about the three ways that the LA Kings are go probably making the playoffs. Why I believe they will. Okay. The first thing, we're, we'll get to this in a moment, but the first thing I would start off with is you're saying, well, how do you recreate Drew Doughty's performance? How do you recreate his excellence? Well, the first thing is you ignore, in my opinion, defense. You take one step back and you look at goalie. And out of the teams that have yet to qualify for the NHL playoffs, out of the teams that are chasing the Kings, the Kings have the best goaltending. They have the best goalie in this situation. Jonathan Quick is very likely going to be the guy. Now, I realize that Quick was injured for a while and they were looking to Cal Peterson. Quick has had a resurgent year. Quick is going to be the man because, after all, he's been in this situation before. He's lifted the Stanley Cup twice when the Kings were in danger of not making the playoffs in, during that time. He would just play out of his mind. The Kings would qualify as a, like a six to eight seed and then they would go on a roll. And that's literally the same situation we're looking at now. Cal Peterson will very likely start tonight for the Kings against Colorado. Why? Because it's the second of a back-to-back -back, uh, game uh, schedule. They played last night. That was quick. Now they put in Peterson. There is only one back-to-back -back, uh, left on the Kings' regular season schedule. That is later in the month. It is very likely that you will not see Cal Peterson again until April 27th at the earliest. And we're going to talk more about scheduling in a moment. The Kings defense, how have they been trying to counter for lacking, uh, for not having Drew Doughty? Well, it appears to me what they've been doing is they've been matching a young player with a veteran throughout the entire, throughout this last month and a half. And I don't see any reason why they would stop doing that. They replaced Doughty with a rookie, Sean Dursey. His minutes are up because Drew Doughty is out. And I'll be honest with you, they like Dursey. I like Dursey. I think Dursey's been playing over his head, and that's where their biggest gamble is because, of course, he's a rookie. He's quick. He plays fast. He passes fast. He makes very quick decisions. But because he likes to join the offense like Drew Doughty does, that means it's important that you match him up with a defenseman who's very responsible by playing in front of the net, and that is Matt Roy. Matt Roy did miss a month. He just came back. He was he used to be the guy that was paired up with Drew Doughty. Well, that's what he does. He's a stay-at-home defenseman, as they say. So he's going to be the guy that they're going to that he's there. They those two are their number one defense pairing. It's the same thing, however, if you notice with the second and third pairings. The top prospect, number eight prospect, is a rookie. Jordan Spence. They brought him up. He literally plays the same type of game as Sean Dursey. Quick, very fast decisions, very effective passer. Matter of fact, Dursey and Spence both are on the power play unit. So Spence fits the Dursey mold. And a lot of people who uh, follow hockey, you know, front office types say the way the game is trending Spence and Dursey are, quote unquote, the defensemen of, of the future, not just for the Kings, but for hockey in general, the type of people who do make the quick decisions, who do know where to pass quickly to clear the, uh, clear the puck out. They're not the typical bruiser, going to knock you on your ass type of defenseman. If the game is changing to quick decisions, Dursey and Spence are your guys. Now you're saying, okay, well, he needs a stay-at-home guy, and for that, the Kings tab Olimata. The third pairing... It's going to be even shakier, but it's the same deal. Young guy, Tobias Bjornfoot, 
paired up with Alex Edler. Now, this is sketchy for two reasons. One, Bjornfoot uh, got clobbered. I mean, he was embarrassed in Minnesota on Sunday. And the other reason, it's kind of iffy. Alex Edler had ankle surgery. Uh, he missed a big chunk of the year. He had to come back, too. So it's literally young new guy who makes quick decisions and will possibly join the offense paired up with veteran stay-at-home guy for all three defensive pairings. The most important reason, aside from quick, that I believe that the Kings will make the playoffs is the schedule. In the NHL, the top three teams of the Western, in, in, there's two divisions in the Western Conference. The top three teams from each division will make it. Therefore, it doesn't matter what Colorado, Minnesota, or St. Louis do. They are completely irrelevant to what the Kings do. After those top three teams in each division, there are two wild cards. So you're saying, okay, well, where do the Kings stand in the division? Well, they are not going to catch Calgary. That's not happening. Okay. So what their important thing is, is that you're saying, well, okay, well, what about the wild card? Well, you got Nashville. Nashville has one more point than the Kings, plus two more games that they have yet to play. The Kings, the Kings have seven games. Nashville has nine. So it's highly unlikely they will catch Nashville. Dallas has 88 points, just like the Kings, but they also have two more games to play than the Kings do. So it's highly unlikely you're going to catch the Dallas Stars. So it's now all about keeping third place or better in the Pacific Division. So let's take a look at the Kings' schedule. Tonight they're going to play Colorado. Colorado is an elite team. Colorado has beaten the Kings twice handily. Do not be surprised if the Kings get their heads kicked in tonight. That's a young team. They're not elite yet. But then after that, you have a stretch of five games against teams that one is almost eliminated and the other four already have. Including in these five games, three of those games are at home. Now, I'm not predicting 10 points out of those five games, but they can make a lot of money make, playing those five games. Matter of fact, you could easily say that if, if things break right for them, they could have this, uh, this wrapped up by the time they play their second back-to-back -back where you're wondering when Cal Peterson might come back on the ice. Why do we say that? Well, because you're talking about the fourth place Vegas Golden Knights, who also have eight games left. All of these teams against the Kings have been eliminated. Colorado, Anaheim twice, Chicago, and Seattle. Meanwhile, you're looking at eight games for uh, the Golden Knights. They're playing Calgary. They're in the playoffs. Edmonton, in the playoffs. Washington, in the playoffs. St. Louis, in the playoffs. Those are all good teams. This is a cake schedule for LA. This is a difficult schedule for Vegas. Heck, you could even make an argument that maybe even with one more game for the Edmonton Oilers, maybe the Kings have a chance to catch Edmonton for second place. <clears throat> At Nashville, playoff team. Vegas, fighting for their playoff lives. Dallas, playoff team. Colorado, playoff team. Pittsburgh, playoff team. We in LA are banking on the fact, and I don't mind doing this because the Kings are a young team, but we in LA are banking on the fact that the LA Kings are playing an easier schedule. I have no problem doing that because the Kings played the tougher schedule early on. Don't judge us. It just broke that way. So yes, I believe the Kings do make the playoffs for the first time since 2018. And if you like this content, then by all means, just a friendly reminder, please like and subscribe. I'm James. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.